Hi, welcome to the second part of the doublet tutorial video. So this is the second of three in the series. We're on, on uh, part B in the document or step 13. So where we left was uh, a system, um, a lens file where we had entered some basic data, but we haven't entered the variables and the uh, figure of merit, the error function in order to do the optimization. So that's the next step for us to do. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take where we are right now with this basic and I'm going to change and save this to example double it. And here I'm going to put in pre-optimization, pre-opt. And if you notice, uh, we've given you ones that ha are titled Lambda. So these are just slightly different names so that you can have both copies. So here at this point, what we have is no variables defined. If I've tried to do optimization, it wouldn't actually know what variables to try to change. So that's the next thing that we want to actually enter. And you can get there by clicking on this optimize variables button under the lens spreadsheet editor. You can go here to variables or a real slick way to do it is to come here and click on a cell. So this is for the radius of curvature or the curvature and we click special variable. So that now opens up this variable data editor and it's already entered that one that I had clicked if I do it that special variables way. If you open it in the other ways that I showed, you know, up here under optimize, for example, it's grayed out now because the spreadsheet is open. If you do it that way, it would start off with an empty spreadsheet. So what I'm actually going to do is I'm going to enter in a few more variables. And I actually want to put this one at the top. So I'm going to go ahead and get rid of it here. So I'll just enter them all in from scratch. So here we go. Surface 2, when you hit this pull down menu, this would actually allow you to uh, enter the curvature into the uh, optimization. Another thing you can do is you can just type in curvature. Now, if you type in something that actually isn't a defined variable uh, for that surface, at the moment, then it wouldn't actually, it would actually choke. So let's say I go to a surface two here and I should enter TH, but let's say for some reason I enter um, GY or something like that, which doesn't have any meaning. Oh, it's an illegal variable name, but instead I can type in TH. So the first surface here now will uh, optimize for curvature and thickness, but the thickness is allowed to go from 500 micrometers up to 100 millimeters. So that's a really huge range. And sometimes when you allow thicknesses and things like that to vary that much, you end up with really long thin lenses or super thin lenses. In this case, I'm going to choose to control that by restricting the values that this variable uh, can can take. And there's a, a penalty for going over those uh, values. So if it goes under six, it starts penalizing it by how much under six it goes. And over eight, it does the same sort of thing. So it's a it's a restriction in, in optimization, which works pretty well to keep you in that range. Right now, the value of this parameter is seven. So six and eight allows it to get a little bit um, smaller or a little bit bigger. And I do that only for thicknesses in this particular example, but you can do this with any variable. So under step 13, the other two variables I need to do are surface three, the curvature, and surface three, the thickness. And then I have one other variable. Oh, and the thickness here, I have the same thing going on. I wanna make it go from two to four, and it's at three now. So I allow it to get a little bit smaller, a little bit bigger, but I don't allow those thickness variables to get uh, to go too crazy on me because I want it to be a doublet that's kind of like this. It can bend in different ways and change thickness a little bit, but not that much. So the last variable that I actually haven't defined is going to be this refocus or that last surface thickness. So if I go here five and I do TH, I'm not going to put any restriction on this. So when the maximum and minimum on these uh, constraints are zero, it'll let it go to whatever value it wants. So if I hit OK now, the green check mark to store the values, you see that I have all these different variables defined. That's a good point to actually save this file for pre-optimization. If you notice, I didn't actually do anything with this last cell, this last uh, radius of curvature. This cell can be either turned into a variable 
or you can do solves on it just like we did a praxial image solve the type of solve that you typically put on this type on this surface would relate to restricting the uh, f number of the system so if i come here and i see that right now i'm at a 3.662 it's a working f number but i have an object at infinity so it's the infinity f number i want to keep this number the same so even as this bends around i don't want the first order properties to be changing so this is the method that I'm choosing just so you know I'll show you that this method for using this last surface alone with a solve to do that but note that there are some other ways to do this you can put a focal length target in the uh, error function you can also put uh, effectively a slope of the marginal ray angle into the merit function and you can achieve the same type of thing but have the need to hold that constraint held over all of the different variables that you have defined. But in this case, I'm going to make sure that it's constrained by this solve. So at this point, the solve that I'm going to want to do is an axial ray angle solve. So this is essentially setting the angle that the marginal ray comes off here. And if you set that to be a certain value, you're effectively fixing the speed of the lens because the diameter, the entrance pupil diameter hasn't changed. So essentially, it's like setting the focal length, uh, constraining the focal length. So right now, I don't know what to enter in this. And I might do a calculation based on this focal length and this diameter and calculate what that slope is. But it turns out we have a, a wonderful code here that can do that kind of stuff for us. So to get that data, if you come here, remember that if you open this box in the upper left of the text window, there's a number of other types of analysis that we can do. If we go to aberrations, there's this other one called PXS, Paraxial Setup. Another way to do this is here under Evaluate Paraxial Setup or just type in PXS. This command gives you this number for the image axial ray slope. So this is the number that would fix us at the current F number that we have or fix this uh, effective focal length. So I could come here to solve and I could go to axial ray angle and I could look here and type in this entire number or I could just note this is cell B18. So if I come here to solve axial ray angle and I just type in B18, it automatically sets that condition to be a solve now. Notice the value here didn't change because I was setting it to what it currently was down to the uh, sort of maximum precision when I use this cell. This is a wonderful, wonderful feature of Oslo, the fact that you can take analysis uh, data out of the spreadsheet buffer and get it into other parts. In this case, it was put into this solve. Really, really nice way to do it. So this was what step number 14 is. So at this point in time, we have all these variables defined and I have something that's going to fix the F number in the system as I optimize. So it's not going to be changing. What's missing though, if I try to come here and optimize, is I don't actually have a figure of merit or an error function defined. So if I come here and I wanted to iterate, which is the Dampley squares optimization, which is a flavor of, of local optimization that uh, is very common in the industry and is a workhorse in Oslo. If I wanted to go and use this optimization, it doesn't actually know how to change these variables and judge whether a system is getting better or not. And in this case, it'll be making the error function smaller. It's easier sometimes to say improving the merit function. So we need to set up that type of function. So step number 15 has us come here to generate error function and we're just going to use the default error function in Oslo. There are certainly is a lot that can be discussed here but essentially what this is going to be is a set of discrete three samples where I'm assessing the spot size in the lens. And I'm just going to go ahead and use three points on the object and it's going to trace a number of different rays through the pupil and it's going to estimate what the spot size is. So I use the RMS spot size. The only thing I need to change here, I'm going to choose to change, is I also want to make a little bit of color correction because it is a doublet and I've picked BK7 and SF2 which is a nice achromatic pair. So I want to keep the a little bit of color data in here. So I hit OK there. So all I did was come to generate error function spot size wavefront and I just wanted to save that chrdmd and then I hit OK 
And now I should be able to optimize if I want. I'm not actually going to do that yet because the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to show that you can look at what's actually in the error function. So the error function has some statistical operands assessing the spot size and then at the end it has these um, CHR um, DMD curve is what they're called um, chromatic correction. So it's a little bit of a more advanced optical design uh, concept to fully understand those. But essentially those are color correction operands. And it's a way that I do like to do it a lot of the time. So that is our merit function. We are all set up now. So we can come here and I hit save. I'm completely set to optimize but I want to go ahead and, and make sure that we have a stored version of that uh, pre-optimization. So it's completely set up to optimize. So now I'm going to save a version of it which has example double it opt. So this is ending step 16. So that's step 16. Now when I optimize, what I actually want to do in this case is I want to open up the Lens Spreadsheet Editor. This will allow me to effectively X out to cancel whatever changes are made with an optimization cycle. Or I can go accept the pending entry and store it. Now remember that's not saved to the disk. Please check the um, videos that we have on the green check mark and red X mark to become familiar with using them. They are pretty nice to use when you do get used to them, although they're not um, as that type of, of programming method isn't as common um, in a lot of in a lot of programs nowadays. So these are pretty handy. Open this up. I'm ready to optimize and I say let's go. Let's see how much it improves. So I hit optimize and under iterate here, make sure I'm going slowly enough, iterate and I'm just going to go ahead and let it run on the standard optimization. And I see, oh, well, it went from 0.047 down to 0.045. Hmm, that didn't seem like it was improving all that much. Come back here again, hit it again, and look at this. It seems like it's stuck. If I look at the actual transverse ray curves, I have a lot of spherical aberration. A little bit of spherochromatism here because these are slightly different. But essentially what's happening here is this focus, this ability to refocus, isn't really being utilized in this case. It's not allowing it to refocus and these other variables are in a sense, they're kind of getting in the way. So it's okay that we've done some optimization. What we actually want to do is we want to allow it to refocus. So since these other variables are in a sense in the way of that process, I'm going to green check mark out, which is going to save the current optimization cycles I've used. And then I open it back up. And the reason I do this is I can come to the variables now and I can delete these variables out. So the only variable left in here is this refocus. Now I go ahead and optimize again. And look, now it's gone from 0.045 down to 0.021609. And you can see it's allowing it to refocus now. And I can come here again, iterate again. And you just want to see sometimes is it is it changing at all. So it seems it's settled out at this point. Now I could save this, or I could go back in and I could store this, or I could go back in at this point and actually re-enter all my variable data. But I can do a little trick. If I come here and hit len, it gives me what the value is of this one variable that's changed. So if I actually X out of this, remember I had stored the results of the previous iter iteration, which hadn't been that effective. Now I have all my variables back in here and I haven't had to re-enter them. And all I cared about changing was this one number, which is cell B55. So if I type in B55 here, I end up with all my variables and now I've got a re-optimization of the system. And essentially, this is a, a kind of done optimization for the moment. It's kind of gone as far as it can. I can go ahead and uh, hit the green check mark and save it. And I also saved it to the file. So this is my example doublet. If you really would like, go ahead and you can hit iterate a little bit. And you can see, yeah, it changed ever so slightly there when I did that. But we're kind of moving numbers down at a level that you can't really build down to that precision anyway. 
So your numbers may be ever so slightly different depending on all the steps and how you've kind of done this, if you've done this in the same order as me. But recognize that when you truncate these numbers, the values that we're changing down here that might be different should be really, really small and really insignificant. So I'm going to go ahead and save this as my uh, example doublet optimize. And now we're set to do the uh, final third video where we're going to improve this by uh, by using an A-sphere. So this has been the process of going from some data that you've entered to entering in things you want to optimize with respect to and actually uh, doing some optimization.